My trading 212 portfolio stands at around £68,000, but only 65-ish of it is invested. I have around £4,000 in free cash sitting in the account right now, and the eagle-eyed viewer might even notice that I haven't signed my ISA declaration for trading 212 this year. Today, I'll explain why that is, and that means today you are going to see a lot more of my finances than just this portfolio. Around six months ago, I had a very large unexpected expense that I needed to pay for in a hurry. It was either pay for it or my house was going to get very expensive. Now, most savvy investors save an emergency fund of around three to six months worth of expenses. I needed 10 grand, which meant that my financial life came to a grinding halt. Turn and, whoa, oh my gosh. I just got honked at. Thank f I had an emergency fund. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul and I started this channel to document my journey attempting to break the shackles of financial restriction. And I fully intend to keep this going right up to the point where I don't need a job anymore. My portfolio is doing pretty well. I'm getting the same bump as most people uh, from this idiocy from the new AI bubble. My stocks are Microsoft, Google, Amazon, ASML and KLA, all benefiting greatly from this craze on the downside one of my stocks digital realty trust has suffered significantly after a bit of a damning short report i foresee quite a significant rebound for these next year but i think that deserves a whole video in itself the key metrics of my portfolio are always improving in the month of may my monthly dividend income remained over 100 pounds for the month and to top it off at the end of the month i finished ahead of my benchmark the vanguard all world index happy with that but this video isn't a monthly portfolio update. This is an explanation as to why I haven't yet deposited in this new financial year, especially when I'm supposed to be depositing around 1,600 a month without fail. In previous videos, I've always said that consistent deposits into that investment ISA is key to it being successful. That rule only applies though if I've got the rest of my life squared away, which I currently don't. Oh geez. Ugh. Uphill. Here we go. Oh man. Give me a second. I believe that before I start investing, I need to have three basic things in place. I need to have a budget that makes sure that I spend less than I earn. I need to have zero debt, other than the mortgage of course and i need to have an emergency fund worth at least six months of my core living expenses that's the one i don't have i've calculated that my emergency fund should be roughly seven thousand pounds that money needs to be in a quick access account and ideally it has to have the highest rate of interest that i can find for the most amount of safety i do not quite have this at the moment and if i lost my job or I had any other large unexpected expense, I might be forced to sell my stock market positions. That goes against one of the most important rules of long-term investing. Don't interrupt compounding. What do we have here? It's like an old bunker of some sort. The emergency fund should be for emergencies, things that you don't foresee. I don't even think the emergency fund is there for when my very, affordable new car breaks down. These things should be already factored into my budget. No, the emergency fund is for things that I don't know are coming, like losing my job or getting sick or maybe even completely writing off my new affordable car. Since I don't currently have an emergency fund, I dedicate the last few months to building back a new one. It's been very painful not being able to add more money back into that investment account. There are two stages to building an emergency fund. Stage one is the emergency emergency fund. It's a smaller amount of your emergency fund that could be needed right away. I think this amount should be just over one month of core expenses. That's housing, car, food, bills, enough to get you over the shock of whatever's just happened. For me, this is around 1,400 pounds and I've been using the NatWest Digital Saver account. It's got a 6% interest rate and I've been using that to build this up slowly. 
My opinion is that 6% risk-free is an incredible return. It's more than I need to achieve financial freedom. The maximum you can have in this account is 5K, so I'll be continuing to add the maximum deposit of 150 pounds a month until it's full. Eventually, that will make up the majority of the £7,000 emergency fund that I actually need. And most importantly, it's instant access, so I can get to it in an emergency. Stage two is, of course, that total emergency fund, ready to bail me out if I ever get into real trouble. I don't need absolute immediate access to this, but if I can't find a really good high interest savings account, premium bonds can get your money out within like three days and it's currently at an average of 3.3 percent and possibly even more importantly it's tax-free and guaranteed by the government that's basically what i need in an emergency fund it's just a shame that seven grand is such a large amount to me these days this combination of the premium bonds account and the digital saver account should come to the amount i need for my emergency fund I've got a small tax bill to come out, but once that's been paid for, I should be ready to get invested again. So you might expect a lot more stock review videos on this channel as I start to review more stocks again. This month though, I'll be adding 2,000 of that 4,000 into my portfolio. I'll be throwing all of this money at Tyson Foods, Realty Income, and Discord Favorite Legal in general. Tyson Foods is going through a tough time at the moment with very poor delivery on its protein. Ooh, I thought that was a snake. <laughs> Uh, I can't do this while walking. Tyson Foods is going through a tough time at the moment with a very poor delivery on its protein market investments. I believe this is temporary due to poor weather, unfortunate events, and ultimately a restructuring of their management. The price has taken a heavy hit after earnings, um, I think unjustified, and so do insiders buying up pretty much everything. Uh, I personally think this is a short-term problem. <laughs> Realty income was dependable as ever, reporting results in line, but its dependability isn't the reason why I'll be buying it today. I believe Realty Income has secret sauce when it comes to the real estate market. It dumped its Orion office section off way before the rest of the market realized, and now it's entering the casino market, buying its first gambling asset. This seems to be all driven by the recent popularity in the Vici Property Trust. I think this is a good move. I think Realty Income is going to become a real competitor in this space. Realty Income has a history of spotting real estate trends way ahead of the rest of the market, and they're diversified enough to absorb any oncoming headwinds. And finally, Discord favorite, Legal in General. Legal in General have a long history of operating income and earnings growth, which doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. Despite this, the market doesn't appear to be rewarding great results. I think the market's missing out on something there. These three businesses all seem to be affected by the exact same thing rising interest rates and a fear of recession. Investors fear that Tyson may not be able to raise its meat prices if people can't afford to pay for it. Realty income will find it harder to grow if loans become too expensive and investors don't want to invest. And legal in general is heavily exposed to the housing market and the material costs that come with that. And believe it or not, it's all backed by credit cards and loads. Not brilliant. These are all risks at the forefront of investors' minds in the present moment. But I don't believe that they are permanently damaging risks to the rest of these great businesses. In my opinion, they are likely to be short-term problems during a recession. Post-recession, I don't believe these businesses are going to have been caught swimming naked. They will improve once the news cycle begins to focus on something else. I am building these new positions now while the market is worried. And believe it or not, I fully expect their situations to get worse before they get better. The worst prices don't usually hit until the recession is announced. But in order to gain the benefit from this in a year's time, I need to start investing in these products now. I had this exact same strategy about eight months ago with Google, Amazon, ASML, KLA and Microsoft. When the news was against everything, those stocks dropped and that was a brilliant time to start buying more of that side of my portfolio. I'm well aware that this is most likely luck, but this balancing strategy has worked well for me for the past three years. So why fix it?